Hello again then folks. So this is the next essay question practice jog pod. So this one's focusing on a 12 mark essay question and this um, I've pulled from the superpowers unit. Now don't forget in the paper two human geography exam the globalization and superpowers are a combined unit and you will get two 12 mark essays. Now, I can't guarantee that one of those essays will be on globalization and one will be on superpowers. It may not be, um, but be prepared. that You may get a 12 mark essay question that is a combination of, the, of both parts. Um, but this one in particular <clears throat> is looking more at the superpowers. You will see, though, that there are elements of the globalization section in here as well. Now, what I'm going to do with this question, I'm going to show you in a second, is, again, go through a possible structure with you. Now, the more you do this, the more it will embed into your brain as to how to structure and how to answer a 12 mark essay question. So here is the question. Assess to what extent. Now, that bit is important. To what extent China can claim to be a superpower? 12 marks. Now. What this question is automatically doing for you is saying the whole entire answer is going to be based on case study example material. That will not be the case for every 12 mark essay. Now, if you think back to all the advice we've given you for a 12 mark essay and for a 20 mark essay, for every paragraph, you make a point, you explain it in general first, and then you back it up with case study example material. This one will be an amalgamation of all of that, but most of the explanation will be done through case study evidence related to China. So when you go, when I go through this, don't think to yourself, well, he's basing this entirely on case study material and examples. But China is mentioned in the actual question itself, and that is the reason why. So pause this for a minute and just think to yourself, how would you structure this answer how would you structure an answer to this question bit of a hint to you again you're going to have four paragraphs one the first one does something in particular and then the following three do something very similar so pause it and have a think and then restart okay so let's start exploring the structure of an answer here so as you should remember your first paragraph is going to be your concise, brief introduction. Now, as you know, define your key terms that are associated or hidden within the question itself. So have a look at that question again. What key terms are within the question or are very important and associated with the question that you feel you need to define? The first one has got to be, what is a superpower? How do you define what a superpower is? Now, if you think back to the content and the theory that lies behind this, there's there's different pillars of what a superpower is. It, it's not just GDP size of economy. There is more to it than that. So bring in the different elements of a superpower definition. You may also want to bring in what is an emerging superpower because that may become important. Now, go back to the question. China is not yet a superpower, but it is an emerging superpower. There are arguments, though, that say it is a superpower. You may want to bring that in later on in the essay. And you may, you don't have to do this, but this is being creative. Bring in the BRIC nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, small s is often South Africa. China is part of the BRIC collective group of nations. You may want to bring that into your introduction as well. So <clears throat> keep your paragraph one, your introduction concise to the point, clear, concise definitions. Don't be waffling on too much. This therefore sets the scene for the remaining parts of the essay. So what you then need to do is jump into answering the actual question. So your paragraph two. Now, think back to all the advice you've been given previously. In a 12 mark assess question, 
you are putting paragraphs in priority order. So your first big paragraph here, paragraph two, has got to be the most important factor that shows that China can claim to be a superpower or is a superpower now. What argument is there that puts that point forward very, very clearly? So again here, pause this and think, what is the most important factor that says China can actually claim to be a superpower? So hopefully you did pause it. And one of the biggest arguments here is China's eco economic GDP size and the size of its economy. Now, what you can also bring in here is an element of the superpowers unit <clears throat> where we looked at the growing and the rise of the middle class in China. So you could put the two elements of the unit together, the growing economics of China and its GDP and size of economy and the middle class. Put those together because these are two arguments to say, actually, in terms of these two factors, these two elements, China is competing with the USA. And many say, and there is evidence out there, that it has, it is overtaking the USA in terms of its GDP and rising middle class. There are other elements you could bring in here. Now, th this is where you could be a bit crafty because that first statement about GDP size and economy and middle class, that could be classed as your point, your statement. What you then need to do is bring in example evidence to, to back up what you're saying in that explanation. Now, if you think back to the unit and also the this is where you can bring in globalization, the outsourcing of industry and manufacturing, cheap manufacturing to China from the Western world, from Europe, from North America. It's going over to countries like China and India and Central Asia, but obviously focused down on China for this question. So you could bring in that example. And I would say you've therefore got to bring in the example case study of China's special economic zones, the SEZs. And the one that you looked at in a bit of detail was the area called Shenzhen. So that adds the element of example to the first point of explanation. Now, what you could also do here, and you've got to be careful you don't talk too much, is you could bring in China's one belt, one road strategy. As that, the, the aim of that is to enhance even further China's economy, China's economic growth, China's GDP, the, gro the further growth of its middle class. So as you can see, all of that is combined. And again, bring in examples. Bring in ex maybe an example of a transnational corporation that is located in China or maybe in China's special economic zone of Shenzhen to show an example company is doing exactly what you have said with regards to the outsourcing. So you wouldn't probably put all of that into paragraph two, but key elements of that must appear. So that's your most important factor to say, yes, China can claim to be a superpower. Your paragraph three then needs to focus down onto a factor, a reason that is still important, but maybe not as important as that first paragraph two. So pause it here again. What could be the second most important factor that shows China could claim to be a superpower? Pause it and have a think. So what I'm going to suggest to you here is one of those second most important factors. So this is where you could look at China as a growing emerging superpower as part of the collective group of BRIC countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Because, as you know, China, as part of that group, has access to the new development bank, which all of the BRICS nations have access to. Now, that could show that China is competing and is able to compete because it has the finance to do so to challenge the USA for superpower status. And you could bring in here China and its influence 
in some other nations around the world. Now, we looked at China and its neo-colonialism methods in some African nations. We looked at Angola, we looked at Zambia, Zimbabwe. So bring in China and its influence in other nations because China is going into other nations for a particular reason. And again, it's to enhance its economic size, its own economy. China will get clear benefits from going in and investing into Angola and Zimbabwe and Zambia. And those countries do get some benefits as well, but China's doing it for a particular reason. So use those particular examples of Angola and Zambia. How is China's economy benefiting from this form of neocolonialism? Now, you can see that's a really important factor as to the growth of China's economy, because China is, I'm not saying using other countries, but is investing in other countries to get something in return. Not as important as the first factor that you outlined, but still one of the most important factors. So then you've got to think, what's your paragraph four going to focus on here? Now, there's two ways of looking at this for this sort of question. First of all, you could go down the normal route, the least most important factor that shows that China can claim to be a superpower. But you could be a bit creative here. Or because the question says, to what extent, an argument that says that China cannot yet claim to be a superpower. Think that one through. Which of those two routes would you take in your paragraph four? Pause it. Have a think. What would you talk about? So I am suggesting this. China feels it can do what it wants as a superpower, but is actually unable to freely do so without being challenged. So in other words, China can't really claim to be a superpower. And that goes down the to what extent, because you already presented two arguments to say actually China could claim to be a superpower. This one is therefore saying it thinks it is, but it actually isn't. It can't be. And a really good example you could bring in here is China and what it's trying to do in the South and East China Sea and go into the reasons for or outline the reasons what China is doing. Why is it doing that in the South and East China Sea? But then what is China trying what is China trying to do? But what is stopping it? What is the obstacle to China meeting its goals in the South and East China Sea? What international defence and checks are making it very difficult for China in that region of the world? And this is where you could bring in the USA as part of the UN patrolling in and intervening in that area of the South China Sea to try and stop China implementing you remember the, cabbage, the cabbage strategy and its nine dash line historical area. So China is trying to show that it's a superpower status through its use of military force in that area and hard power. But can it do it unchallenged? Not really. So that's where you could be a bit more creative with your paragraph four. So does a, a 12 mark assess question need a final fifth paragraph of conclusion? No. Assess 12 mark questions do not need a conclusion. You won't have the space to do it on the exam paper for a start and you won't have the time to do that either. So no conclusion for a 12 mark assess question. So by the end of that question, what you've done is you've introduced your key terms. You've got three clear, clear paragraphs, paragraph two and three, showing the most important factor to say that China can be a superpower. The second, the, sorry, the third paragraph showing there is still an important factor that's saying it could be a superpower, but not quite as important as the first one you outlined. And then paragraph four here, you've actually said China's trying to do this in the South China Sea. Here's, it, here's what it's trying to do, but it actually can't do it effectively and therefore could show that it's not necessarily a superpower as yet. So go over that once again, have a good look and then start to practice answering that question, maybe in prep for the exam. 
Thank you very much. Thanks.